The immunotherapy targets in melanoma being investigated is always at the top of my mind being a phase one immuno person because a lot of what we see in one of the most immune reactive tumors, melanoma, helps us understand how to treat other solid tumors that have shown early benefit. I believe that the LAG3 paradigm with the approval of Abdulag from uh, Bristol-Myers Squibb is still in evolution. When you look at those cohorts, you see benefits in BRAF mutated and BRAF wild type that are equivalent. But this LAG3 staining is another predictive marker that's going to come into our lexicon and whether that holds for other solid tumors is yet to be seen, whether that helps us decide where to go in first line and then in refractory patients. The TIGIT paradigm in lung cancer has come to melanoma also, but additionally, what to do in refractory past just combinations, but triplets uh, and quadruplets, and even bringing in separate uh, paradigms. So the idea of adoptive T-cell therapy, which is big with the IOVANCE data at FDA right now, has moved on to look at how you can manipulate those T-cells in a better fashion, has moved on to making us uh, question the role of CAR-T in melanoma, and then first-line combinations with anti-PD-1 uh, agents and TIL. So lots moving forward. Again, uh, bispecific therapies, those IMTACs like Tabentafus that have been approved for ocular melanoma with survival advantage are being looked at in melanoma also. We have preliminary data that it can be tolerated with anti-CTLA-4, anti-PD-1 concurrently. And we have early data from one of the initial trials showing a greater than 30% clinical benefit in cutaneous melanoma. So those trials are going forward. Additionally, how we give these drugs is being looked at. Whether we can give them together at the same time to save our patients time, whether there are other routes to give them, subcutaneous, um, and also where we can take something that we've all become accustomed to, like anti-PD-1 therapy, and look at the greatest hurdles leptomeningeal disease, and that's the data from Isabella Glitza looking at leptomeningeal disease in heavily pretreated patients showing that intrathecal therapies with checkpoint inhibitors can work where they have failed systemically. So it's uh, a lot, and I look forward to that data being presented and helping us fine tune how we take care of all solid tumors.